Dolphins workshop for you. On the one hand, it's a chance for them to share a topic they're passionate about. They can have those really have state life impact groups that have some highly effective On the other hand, it's also a chance for them to develop their facilitation skills and work on the workshop presentation. So, we're asking them to pass out the action cards down to all of you. We're going to take notes as we go. As long as it doesn't interrupt the flow of the workshop or activities going on. Um, and feel free to give these two feedback because they're going to use this to take this forward. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce them. You know them both. Hello, my name is Nick Gertis. I'm a proud board member serving at the Blackstone Elementary School. Wow. My name is Maddie G. I'm a proud board member serving at Young Achievers. So, our dream that we prepare for you is uh, like a uh, representative space off the seven habits of other uh, people, and we can kind of like transform it to make it relative to our four years, so I really named it the four habits of highly effective four habits. So with that, um, we have two goals that we uh, put with this training, and we want to uh, demonstrate what in this training feels to understand, understand what these habits are, why they're effective, and where we can apply them in our service. Alright, so can you, can you all hear me? Alright, so there's a few things that you're going to learn in this training. First of all, you're going to learn how to take control of the final few months of your career through the power of response ability. Um, I, some of these things I realize you, you're looking at them and you're like, I wish I had learned this maybe a few months ago, but realize that these aren't, don't just apply to this year, but they apply for the rest of your life. So just be grateful you're learning them now, not like five years from now. So, how to achieve your service goals and lazy plans in a simple, step-by-step -step process that will dramatically increase your chances of success. We're going to teach you a simple strategy to create work-life balance and a four-step process to connect with kids and core members. So, what are the seven habits? The seven habits, as a book is one, be proactive, two, be your kid in mind, Three, put the first things first. Four, think win win. Five, think first out of ten, then be understood. Six, synergize, seven, start with the song. We're not going to go over all these habits that were taking us way too long to go over those and all of a sudden. So we just picked out one, two, three, five, and thought we'd present those to you for this presentation. Alright, so now what I want everybody to do is uh, you got a paper on your chair at the beginning that has a picture on it. I want everybody to go ahead and look at that picture. Right, just take a look at it for a second. And can I have somebody describe what they see? Anybody? Yeah, there are. Go around and pass your hands. I see a woman probably like circa 1920s looking behind her shoulder. She looks like she's well dressed. Maybe like some clubs going on in the past. Okay. All right. Can, can somebody else describe to me what they see? Over here? Anybody over here? Ian. My name is Ian Prendergast, or OG. I actually I see an old crone, you might say. Uh, she's wearing a hat, she's got some curly hair, and wearing what looks like a fur coat. Okay. Do you see an old crone? And Nora. Nora, uh, where is. What is this on the young woman? That's a nose. That's a nose. What is this on the old woman? Yeah. That, that's her nose as well. Nose. What is this on the young woman, Nora? A necklace. What is this on the old woman? A mouth. A mouth. Alright, so are you guys starting to see that there's two pictures up here? Everybody see that? Now what we want to get across with this is the power of paradigm. And what a paradigm is is the way to view things. In this case, there's two paradigms you can do this as. You can view this as a young woman and an old woman. Sometimes you have to let go of what you know in order to see another perspective. So if you thought, thought that line at the bottom was the old lady's mouth, there's no way you can see it as a young woman's necklace until you actually change that perspective. So what I wanted to do for the duration of this training is try and let go of what you think or what you know and see if you can come with that fresh perspective. Or because otherwise there's no way that you'll be able to learn. Yeah, Aaron? What happens if you see it as full from like the get-go? But if you see this most from the get-go, yeah. that's actually what something we had just before. That means that you're able to see both paradigms, right? 
But you can't see both at the same time. You can't see like an old lady and a young woman. Right? You have to let go of one in order to see the other. So the same thing still applies. You can't see an old lady and a young woman at the same time because you can't be like, oh, this is this is either a necklace or a map. It's not both. Does that make sense? Yeah. Alright. So I need someone, please read for me the PSW that happens to be on this projector. Anyone. Anyone else? Nicole. Yeah. Your health, the education your students are receiving. 
outline in that circle, out of that circle of influence, still in the circle of influence, are those, are those things that you do not have control over. That would be your student's situation at home. Your student's situation at home. You have no control over that. So, what I want to show you on this next slide is where, how, is really demonstrates like how proactive you are already being, and like where do you spend most of your time in which of those two circles. If you spend most of your time worrying about what your uh, student's home life is at home, or whether the world's going to end in 2012, you're really losing all that time and energy you could spend thinking about and working on things you can influence, things you can change. Now on the left side, you can see the circle of influence is kind of expanding. I, don't want, I want to explain that to you. This is when you spend that energy, affecting those things, um, having those effects where you can have effects, such as working with increasing the education, the education the student receives in the classroom. If you focus on that, and focus your time and energy in that circle of influence, you might actually build a rapport with that student that they start talking about you at home with their parents. Their parents start to recognize who you are in their life. So all of a sudden, that circle in that area of circle concern, where you had no influence over their home life at home, you now have influence over their life at home. You now have a bit of influence over their life. You spend your time and energy working with that student, and you can help them at home. You can now, you can now talk with their mother, their mother or father and say, well, they actually need a little bit more reading at home. They need to spend more time reading. And I would like it if you could make sure they're reading at home. So you've expanded your circle of influence. And that's where you need to spend most of your time. You need to spend most of your time working on that um, circle of and expanding it. So there's one thing we don't have control over. We do have control over that point between the stimulus and the response. We have that point where we can choose how are we going to respond to any given situation. We don't have control over what happens after we make that choice. We don't have control over our consequences. So if we chose to have that reactive mindset when we receive that occurrence that morning, how we treat those that are coming around us in that bad mood, that, those are the consequences we're going to receive. That's what we don't have control over. We don't know how they're going to treat us from that point on because we've already made our choice. On the opposing side, if you make that good, it, that good choice, that proactive choice, and say, you know what, this is really my fault, I take responsibility for my own life, you are then going to be able, to that. You are then going to be able, I'll just, you are then going to be able to have those positive um, interactions with your team and with your boss. So, I would now like to do an activity with you. I would like you to find partner next to you. And I would like you to practice the proactive reactive language that I talked about at the beginning. Really, I want you to talk about a very difficult task and how to overcome a city. And then I want your partner to correct you and record each time you make a reactive statement. Me and Matt are going to do a quick demonstration here. Would you like to tell me about the difficult challenge you've had at the year? Uh, well, go back to your to the helpful language. Alright, so one thing that um, that um, I've had trouble with is maintaining the momentum I had at the beginning of the year towards the end of the year. Um, let me pause. So you had trouble. Okay. I want right, to one thing. reverse that. that okay. Okay. One, one, take one, one way. Sorry. Alright, so. I'm going, to, I'm going to rephrase that and say one thing that I've chosen to do is not go as hard towards the end of the year as I did at the beginning. Exactly. So it's correcting that state, make sure they're talking in a positive, I take responsibility for my own life state. So we're going to give you two minutes, turn to a partner, we're going to try to explain that difficult challenge that we've had in the year, and they're going to correct us, have us on the flip side, and say a proactive response. And after two minutes, we'll reverse roll. Go ahead and please.
So, can we please have some report back? Tell us like maybe something you noticed, something you learned, something you didn't. Anyone? Anyone at all? Yes. Sure, if I'm gonna succeed, now I'm still scared. Like, it's really hard. And if I didn't have this 
Kruger the system with every part of my being, every every part of me that could want to do this, they do it, there's no way I can stick with this. Now let me move this down to something that you all are facing right now. Either next year or in a few years, you're all going to be entering the job market. And it's not a good time to be entering the job market right now. I'm sure you all have things you want to do. Are you sure about them? Are you sure about them with every party you could possibly care about them? Because if you're not, how are you going to stick with it? There's some party that's like, ah, maybe, maybe I want to do something else. How are you going to stick with it in this job market? That's why this is important. So how do we do this? How do we make this decision? It's so important that we can't let go. First, I want to talk to you guys about the magical land of Kalamazoo. It's a parable. Um, Kalamazoo, in this situation, is not a uh, city in Michigan. So, the magical land of Kalamazoo. There was once a man in a village. And he was content, and he was happy, and he had a routine. And one day he heard an elder speaking about the magical land of Kalamazoo at the top of the tallest mountain that was right next to the village. So he started thinking, in this magical land of Kalamazoo was magic and riches and a place where he could belong and everything he had ever wanted. So he started thinking about this for the next few months. He started really, really saying, all right, man, I want this. I want to get to that magical land of Kalamazoo. I want those magic and riches and the place where I belong. So one day, he was like, all right, this is it. I'm going to get to that magical land of Kalamazoo. So he marched up to the mountain, and he looked up at the magical land of Kalamazoo with the magic and riches, and then he looked down at the entire mountain that he had to cross to get up to it. He said, you know what? I can't do this. I'm not ready. And he went back to his village where he had routine, and he had ease, and he had everything he had had for his whole life. So that night, he went to bed, and he started thinking about that mountain. He started thinking about how he could climb that mountain. He started thinking about for the next few months. He started thinking about, you know what? Maybe I can get up this mountain. You know what? I'm willing to do it. So he went back and he marched back up the mountain. He looked up the magical land of Kalamazoo with his magical riches and he started to climb. And he got a fifth of the way up. And he got a fourth of the way up. And he got a third of the way up. And then he looked up at all that big mountain he had to climb. And that little bit that he would just have to go back. And he said, you know what, I'm okay with where I am now. I don't want to go through all that rest of that stuff. I'm tired. I'm going to go back to my place that I'm used to, it's comfortable, and it's everything I've been used to my whole life. So I went back to bed, and that night he started thinking about, wait a second, am I really comfortable here? Is this really what I want for my life? And he started thinking about that for the next few months, and he got to the point where he was like, I can't stand being there anymore. I'm meant for bigger things. I'm meant for magic and riches and a place where I belong. So he went back up to the mountain. He looked up at the magical land of Kalamazoo and he was like, all right, I'm going to do it. So he got a fifth of the way up. And he got a fourth of the way up. And he got a third of the way up. He looked up all the big thing that he had to go get there and the little distance where he go back. He went back to the village and he said, no way am I going back there. And he climbed to the mountain and he reached the magical land of Kalamazoo. And he got magic and riches and everything he ever wanted. So that is the magical land of Kalamazoo. So, what does this teach you? What does this teach you? It teaches you that there's, everybody thinks there's one decision when you have a goal. I want this. I want to be a teacher when I get out of city year. I want my kid to pass the MCAS. But there's not. There's three decisions. There's I want. I want to achieve my goal. Two, I'm willing to do what it takes to get there. And three, I want to change where I am. If you don't make these three decisions, then something is going to stop you. Either when you see that big mountain is going to stop you, maybe when you reach a stumbling block along the way, it's going to stop you. But if you don't make those three decisions, you're not there. And within these three decisions, there's these four dimensions. Logic, that's, does this decision make sense? Does it make sense to leave where I am? Does it make sense to go where my goal will take me? Emotions, does it feel good to leave where I am and go where my goal will take me? Does it feel bad to be where I currently am? Values. Is this who I am? Is where I am? Is where I am really me? Is it the right thing to do? Is what I'm going to achieve the right thing to do? Will it bring out the best in me? And reality. This is making sure that all those dimensions make sense. So funny thing is, when when you came to City Year, did you know about everything City Year? Did you know about PT? Did you know about LDDs? Did you know about working in the classrooms? The people, what I found is that the people who know, who knew the most about the reality of what city is going to be like, are the happiest out of the game. Right? So, I want to give you guys real quickly one 
practical thing you can do for each of these dimensions. Logic. You can make a pros and cons list. What's good about changing? What's bad about changing? What will I lose? What will I gain? And then compare them. If you get, if positives outweigh the negatives, good. Go for it. Motions. Do a future projection. Imagine where you're going to be, and I'm going to tell you when we get to reality how you figure out what that will be. Imagine exactly what you're going to be, and then the emotions, and then just read over it, right? Like, write, write in a paragraph. Like, you know, I'll have this, this, this in my life, and read over it. How do you feel? Do you feel good, or do you feel bad? Do you feel good? Go for it. Values. We've written, throughout uh, our time at Sydney, we've written mission statements, right? We've written some for IJ, we've written some for trainings. The mission statement is what you want your life to ultimately be about. So what you're going to do, you're going to go back to one of those mission statements, you're going to read over it. And then you're going to look at where you are now and say, does it match up? Then you're going to look at where your goal is and say, does it match up? The one that matches up more, go for it. Finally, reality. Two simple things. One, you're going to find somebody who's done your goal before. Somebody who's achieved what you want to achieve or something very similar. You're going to ask them, what's the best thing? What's the worst thing? How hard was it to get there? What were the biggest stumbling blocks along the way? Okay? The other thing you can do with this is the SWOT analysis. Figure out your strength that will help you achieve the goal, your weaknesses that will hinder you in achieving your goal, opportunities that will help you with the goal, and threats that will hinder you with the goal. And that will give you a more of an internal sense of how good a fit this goal is for you. So, you've now made that congruent decision. What comes next? The reality shift. Because this isn't just a dream, it's for real. <laughs> you can say, I want all time. I can say, I can say there's a million things I want that are good things. I want a million dollars. I want to make a difference in the world. I want to change the world. You can say, I want all you want. But if you say, I will, you're doing nothing, right? If you don't sit down and say, all right, here's what I want. Now, here's how I'm going to get there. I'm going to get all these steps in place. I'm actually ready to go ahead and do it. Put that stake in the ground. Nothing's going to happen. So how do you do this? How do you go ahead and put that stake in the ground and say, I will? Again, four dimensions. First, you have to plan. You have to start at the end, your vision, which we'll talk about in a second, all the way back to where you are now. Then you have to commit to that plan. You have to, this is where you, go, this is the part where you say, I will. You have to somehow put that stake in the ground and make that shift from, this is something, you know, I really want this in my life too. I'm gonna get this. You have to prepare. You have to get all those things in place, resources in place, so that when you're ready to an active plan, you can go. And all of this has to be centered around a compelling vision that inspires passion. So, let's go through each of these and give you one practical thing. Planning. Like I said, you're gonna start at the end, you start your vision. You're gonna start at the very end, what you're gonna achieve. You're going to ask, can I do this tomorrow? Can I just have all the stuff in my vision tomorrow? So, a kid, you know, I, I want this kid to pass the MCAS. Can you, could he, if he took the MCAS tomorrow, could he pass it? No. What needs to happen first? Well, you probably need to get some math tutoring. So math tutoring is a step before. Can you get math tutoring tomorrow? No, I probably need to call his parent first. Okay, call his parent before. Can I call his parent tomorrow? Yes, I can. Right? I get the number of call tomorrow. So that's where you start. You start what you can do tomorrow, and you work all the way up. And that's and then there might be another line of that where it's like, you know, he also needs to get test tutoring in addition to math tutoring. So you can you start at the end and then you go backwards along these different lines. That makes sense? Pretty simple. Next, you commit. The easiest way to commit, you're gonna schedule something with somebody else. If you need to get to call his parents tomorrow, then you are going to say, hey, you're gonna talk to the you say, hey, I need five minutes to talk to you tomorrow to get this kid's number. Now you've done two things. When they talk about commitments. You made a commitment to yourself, I'm gonna meet the teacher, and you made a commitment to the teacher. Both you and another person can hold you to that. So easy. Just make schedule something with someone else. Easiest way to commit. Prepare. Two things, big things that every goal needs. Most goals need. Time, money, or both. Time. What are you gonna do? You're gonna look at your schedule for the week. You're gonna plan out at least a little bit of time every day where you can work on this goal. Whether it's five minutes, whether it's a half hour, at least a little bit of time every day to work on this goal. I'm not saying like every day you're gonna be like, oh, when can I do this? You're gonna do the same time every single week on that day for that goal. Money, set up a savings account. Name it after your goal. Take automatic withdrawals from your paycheck. 
You're not going to give yourself an option. You're not going to say, I really, I want to put money in my paycheck. You're going to say, I will. You're going to make it automatic withdrawals. <laughs> Finally, your vision. Three things that need to be included in your vision. What will I do? Experiences. What will I have? Physical, tangible objects. Who will I be? What kind of person will I be? You can do that in a lot of ways. You can make it a three-column three chart with you have be. You can do it kind of like you did the emotional thing. You can write a paragraph. You can write a day in the life. However you want to get across you have be, do that. And that vision must inspire passion. It must. Because if you don't have that passion, if you don't have that passion, you're not really committing. Right? You don't care. Next, effective action. Because otherwise, it's all just BS. This is where the fear comes in, right? Even if you committed to something, you made it to something else, there's still a little part of you that can say, you know, I can cancel on that meeting. I don't really have to do this. But effective action is where you actually go ahead and do it. And that's scary. But if you don't do it, right, you can do you can do all the other steps, don't do this, and nothing will happen. If you do this step and don't do all the other steps, at least something will change. The world will change if you did it. So this is the most important step of the process. How do you do it? How do you take effective action? How do you minimize that fear so that you can actually take action? Four dimensions. Action, that's actually taking those that one small next step, not worrying about the big, the big thing. Just saying, not saying when can I finish, when can I start? Motivation. That's anything that makes action easier, more efficient, or more desirable. Evaluation. That's making sure that your action, your motivation, your plan actually getting you closer to your goal. It's kind of correcting course and seeing if you're on the right track. It's all centered around the outcome. I'm not going to spend too much time on this um, outcome in this presentation because we don't have the time for it. So, action. One thing you can do. I, like, I have a simple acronym I to use for this. D-O-A-E-D. -E -D. Do it. Not bad, do it. Good, do it. Do one action every day. What that gives you is momentum. Momentum is one of the most effective ways I know to get rid of that fear. Because if you're in the habit of starting every single day, starting becomes less scary. Motivation. I'm going to give you another acronym. G-I-G-O. Gigo. It means two things. Garbage in, garbage out. And great inputs lead to great outputs. What does this mean? It means that if you put good things into yourself and into your life, you're going to take great actions. You're going to be able to take... Um, you're going to be able to, to output creatively. So an example, have good friends, read good books, eat good food, talk to good people, and good things will come out of your life. Get go. I have a whole wall that's just like great quotes and like pictures and stuff that I like to look at because of this. Great inputs with great outputs. Evaluation. You're going to sit down once a month, whether it's the first of every month, the first Friday of every month, just one time every month, and say, where am I? Where am I going? Am I on the right path? What's the one thing that I can do better that will most help me achieve my goal? Once a month. So, you've done all those things. Now, we're going to practice them. What we're going to do in just a second, we're going to split up. We have tables around the room for each team. You're going to use spaghetti and marshmallows to make one of three things. One, the ideal core member. Two is your dream house, and three is a replica of the Washington Memorial. You're going to have to first take two minutes to decide which option to take. Secondly, you're going to have to make a reality shift by planning exactly how you're going to do that. And third, you're going to take effective action and build it. Now, there will be a prize for this. Me and Nick were thinking like a, a um, Core member, uh, what's it called? The Idealist Handbook signed by like Robbie and Charlie Rose, something like that. It's gonna be good. Whatever it is, it's gonna be good. And it'll go to that team. So if you want that, if you want the Idealist Handbook, we need to play with them first. But if you want it, um, if you want it, take this seriously. So what I'm gonna do? Go ahead, stand up, and find your find your team table.
decision. So here, up here is everything you can have. You have three choices of things to make. The idea of the core member, your dream hat, the replica of the watch at the memorial. Here's what you can do for each dimension. For reality, you can use swap analysis. That's strength of your team, weaknesses of your team, opportunities that will help you with this, and threats that will go against you. For reality, you can make a perfect contrast between one of these. Promotion, you can do that emotional projection like I was talking about. And for values, you can look at your mission statement. What is your team like? How will it do it? You're not allowed to open anything, touch anything yet. If you didn't touch it, stop. And I, um, anything that's not written down, we won't be able to grade. So write down all this stuff. You're going to have two minutes to decide which one you want to make. Ready? Begin. <laughs>
Yeah, thanks. So we send tucks and toss to break the pasta. You can break the pasta whatever you want. You can't put any marshmallows out. You can't take any marshmallows out. So you're going to have two minutes to do this. Ready? Begin.